Good afternoon all, um, welcome to the Echo Driving School channel. Uh, today I'm going to be doing the Beddington, uh, Beddington Lane route uh, from the test centre, so hopefully um, people will benefit from this. Again, uh, thank you for all those people who have been liking and looking at the videos. Um, and as I said before, this is all for you guys, so that you guys can help out doing this. Now, when we come out of the test centre, remember, do look around. All, all round and inside the test centre it's 10 miles an hour up to the gates after that you would do the appropriate speed um, for the road um, that we're going through now as you're coming here look out for bikes and other big vehicles it is an industrial estate so therefore there'll be plenty of other vehicles using the road as well uh, this route, the examiner will say at the end of the road, turn left. So remember your MSPSL routine, mirror, signal, position your car to where you're going, adjust your speed accordingly. There is a vehicle right at the corner with his hazard light, so therefore I have to just move out to the right a little bit more. And then when you're coming out from the test centre, it is a quite a blind junction on your right, so peep and creep. Um, because you're turning left it's a little bit easier to turn check your center mirror and make progress accordingly this road that we're doing now used to be a 40 it has now become 30 so there are signs at the test center that tells you that the new speed limit has now come in force so it is a 30 anybody doing a 40 you will fail for excessive speed so make sure that you are aware of the speed limit um, your driving instructor will make you aware for anybody who doesn't know this area the signs can be a little bit shady you might not always see the sign so remember 30 coming out the test center and turning left is a 30 so we're just coming up to the sign it's a little bit hidden with the trees it says Beddington and the examiner might say uh, follow the signs for Beddington at the uh, traffic lights so uh, five car lengths uh, is when you want to signal before uh, your junction so we're, we're not just there yet we're just waiting behind uh, this Soco vehicle in front of us uh, while you're in traffic remember it's a good idea to use your handbrakes so that your brake lights are not producing too much glare uh, for the person behind us. Remember, maintain your tires and tarmac from the vehicle in front of you so you've got enough clearance to overtake the vehicle if the situation arises where the vehicle in front of you uh, breaks down uh, for any reason. Um, as we're waiting over here, you, you should always be aware of your surrounding so do periodically look at your left mirror so we're just going over here so i've just checked my left mirror and now i'm checking my center and left mirror again left signal on and i'm going to turn left at the traffic lights uh, this road can be taken in second or first depends on what your car demands um, i'm driving a citroen ds um, so it's a diesel and it was fine it didn't uh, rattle in any way so that was okay now the Beddington Lane uh, it's quite a narrow road so make sure that you're in the center of your lane and you are aware of any big vehicles or anything in front of uh, to your side uh, to your left as well watching out for cyclists who are obviously straddling the lanes as you're going along here it's not a road that a lot ha you know, happens generally but you will find the road to be quite bendy and you want to make sure that you're not going too fast for the road condition or too slow. Uh, I have known of people failing on this route for traveling at 20 miles an hour. It is a 30 mile speed limit zone so therefore make sure when it's safe to do so and you will find opportunities to do, thir uh, to do 30 so make sure you do. We're just going past the tram crossing um, so the lights have just turned green checking my mirror going into second now on the left 
that examiners examiners could quite easily ask you to pull up somewhere safe, convenient, and legal. On the left, apart from driveways, there is no uh, yellow line or red line, so it will be perfectly legal for you to stop on the left if asked to do so. Now, at the roundabout, I would like you to turn left, and it's your first exit. The sign would probably be Central London, so we're turning left, or Croydon actually, I repeat, Croydon. Uh, initially, it will say Croydon A232 or M23, so not Central London, Croydon. Um, as you go along this road, again, you will find plenty of uh, industrial vehicles. Uh, there's a lot of uh, skip sites on the left and so forth, so make sure when you position your vehicle, you are positioning on your side of the road and not hogging up the right hand side. Now, um, I have sat in other tests where um, examiners have said, I would like you to pull up on the left somewhere safe, please. So I'm just going to check my mirror, give a left signal, I'm braking, clutching down, getting rough, reasonably close to the curb without affecting any other road user. Once I stop, handbrake up into neutral, cancel my signal. As soon as you do that, the examiner will say, move off when you're ready, please. So clutch down, first gear, remember your POM routine, find the biting point, hold it at the bite, check your mirror, and then your blind spot over your right shoulder, give a right signal, another blind spot, if it's safe to do so, take the handbrake down and make your progress. They will stop you at least five or six times uh, in the exam to see how you move off and how you stop, and I will try and replicate that uh, as much as possible. So, uh, making progress ahead, you're going to find, at the moment, as I said, it's, it's, these roads are not a lot about meeting, they're about road position and how you deal with large vehicles. They're large goods vehicles, so the articulated lorry types. So we're coming at the roundabout and still you're following the road ahead. So into second gear, it's an open roundabout, so open junction. There are one or two cars coming but they're not going in your direction in my direction so therefore you don't need to signal um, you just follow the road ahead because there is only two exits it's either right or ahead so therefore I would say you wouldn't really need to signal to go ahead on these junctions uh, this is the route that goes towards IKEA so for anybody who's local you would recognize that the two IKEA twin towers um, or chimney blocks there ahead of us and we are near the IKEA so this is the IKEA route also referred as the IKEA route uh, we've got another roundabout coming up at the roundabout we are following the road ahead and this time round you will see the signs ahead being central London so it's a busier junction than the previous one so first gear on approach because there's plenty of cars coming um, it you if if there is two lanes then you position yourself on the left sometimes other cars make it one lane but we're going left so we can make it two lane I'm just looking on my right for any vehicles coming and there's a few vehicles coming so I'm gonna wait without causing them any issues when I see a gap developing I'm gonna take the turn so the gap still hasn't come there's quite a few cars here and they're coming in my direction so therefore I'm going to wait until I see a safe gap. So there's still cars coming. I'm just going to go after this one. And here I am, just gone on my side. Um, I don't know if you can see in the video, but note I use the car on my right as my shield. Uh, so we call them blockers. And the central London sign is a little bit hidden again uh, in the bushes. And you just maintain your left hand side going ahead. Now, as I'm going ahead here, it's a flyover, which is a one-way uh, road flyover. So maintain the center of your lane. And at the end of this road, uh, you can only turn left. So still, a um, signal uh, could benefit other road users. So I'm going to give a left signal. Um, nothing will happen if you don't give a left signal because you can go in one direction. Um, but I feel that it's still necessary to give a left signal um, so it would help other road users. Now remember, you're joining a dual carriageway, 
where the uh, the uh, speed of this dual carriageway is 30 miles an hour and people are coming up the hill uh, with quite a little bit of speed not everybody's doing 30 um, which is you know most people don't always follow the speed limit so you've got to look for a safe gap for you to enter without causing any cars to slow down swerve or stop for you so I'm just looking on my right and I can see a gap developing just after this maroon car I'm gonna go now then the examiner's gonna say to me can you turn take the next available road on the right so center mirror right mirror note here that you've got a lot of hatch marking and you're not allowed to go into the hatch marking uh, until you get to your road marking with the arrow saying turn right um, so make sure because if you do too early go into the hatch marking without any reason you would get a fault for not adhering to the road marking rules um, again here you're gonna turn right and look at the speed sign remember there's a lot of 20s going on now so we're gonna turn right and as we turn it's a 20 now the examiner here would say can you turn left please now the left is not it's this left that I'm going and not an immediate left on the left hand side because there are two roads next to each other then on the roundabout the examiner will say to you can you turn right at the first roundabout and then a left at the second one so it's two mini roundabouts together so on the first one give a right signal and then on the second one give a left signal and that's how you would do the two roundabouts but remember on the roundabouts you need to treat each roundabout even though it's mini and even though they're close together you need to treat each one of them individually and so therefore on the first one you would give a right signal because you're going after 12 o'clock and on the second one you will give a left signal to say that you're turning off so bear that in mind we're going to turn left onto Kingsley Road it's a fairly blind junction as I turn in so take it nice and slowly and then you've got a few side roads here where the examiner can make you go either the way I'm going or do any of the other routes that are here so be careful on these side roads there are going to be plenty of um, pedestrians or you know hidden dangers in between cars there could be toddlers all the stuff that you've been doing and your hazard perception this is where you want to apply the knowledge as we come along here we're going to be following the road ahead as I said before this is all a 20 zone so make sure that you do not exceed the speed limit as we go along here the road is fairly wide so I'm going to be sitting about a meter from the curb usually there's parked cars but maybe because today's a Saturday there's not going to be any parked cars now at the end of this road I would like you to turn right please so there is another learner here so I'm just going to put it into first gear give way to the learner and then give a right signal and then at the end of this road we're turning right as you come out of this road remember there is a width limit um, on the road that we're entering to stop big vehicles from turning so here you, as you come out we're going to be turning left so make sure that you're in low gear so preferably gear one and you want to peep and creep through the gap remember anybody who has issues with you know width and you're scared about you're going to touch uh, you know the pillars make sure you're looking where you want the car to go so don't actually look physically at the pillars or your mirrors look at the gap in between the two pillars and that will be an easy way for you to estimate whether you're going to fit through or not the moment you start to look at your mirrors then your car might wobble a little bit so just got a pedestrian in front of me so just gonna wait until she's passed and then get to the giveaway line again it's a fairly busy junction you want to look for a safe gap without causing anybody uh, to slow down swerve so there's a person turning uh, so therefore I'm going to take that turn now we're back at the Lombard roundabout now this is the only time that you might actually do the Lombard roundabout um, on this route um, obviously um, 
I've cut the route a little bit shorter so that I shorter so that I could do another video on a different route. Um, so at the roundabout, I would like you to follow the road ahead, second exit. So left hand lane because it's not after 12, it's actually just before 12. This can be a tricky uh, roundabout. So there's my little gap and I'm gonna take it. And then after I go past the first exit, I'll give a left signal and then I'm gonna head back out into following the signs for Wimbledon and Mitcham. This route leads me back onto uh, the test center and we're gonna go back inside the test center and then I'm gonna do another route so I'm going to try and fit a few more routes in today, um, you know, so that uh, you guys can benefit from those routes again. Uh, as we're going along here, as I've said, this is a 30 zone and there's a little bit of uh, traffic. So just make sure you're keeping your following distance um, away from, uh, from the following, the cars that you're following. First gear is generally okay on a road like here um, where there's traffic. Uh, if you can't make it uh, you know, beyond the 10 miles an hour speed, then stick it at first gear. I'm just riding it in second gear now because I'm just doing about 11, 12 miles. And the traffic is freeing a little bit, so I'm going to make progress accordingly. Um, now, again, as we're going along down here, there's um, a pedestrian crossing in front of us. Uh, so I'm just going to react to that and there's a car waiting to turn right. So I'm gonna brake and allow the car to go. Um, two reasons, one, the car is in front of me is already stopping, so therefore, whenever you are deciding whether to let a car go or not, think to yourself, if you're gonna have to stop anyway, then obviously do be courteous and let the person in front of you uh, go. Now, um, from here, I'm probably going to conclude this video because uh, we're just nearing the test center, and you know you can you can see what we need to do from there. Um, so until next time, thank you for looking at this video. Um, as I said, I'm going to put another video on, which is going to be titled Pollard's Hill Test Route. So <clears throat> just um, have a look at that. Okay, thanks for looking.